So this is a new series of uh, players, new players that I'm starting called Generative Art in Practice. And this is because when I search through YouTube for myself, I'm seeing either the very simple stuff, series of processing or series of stuff, you draw a rectangle and an ellipse, which I have in my getting started with processing uh, videos. I made a whole bunch of videos on that. And then it comes to people showing off very, very complicated and cool stuff, which is great. But what about in the beginning for those of us who want to try to do that? I think there are a lot of steps, uh, tips and tricks that we can learn from each other. In that spirit, I'm creating this whole playlist called Generative Art in Practice. And uh, one very simple animation that I could think of was to animate four rectangles. The idea I had was very, very simple. So let's say that this was my whole canvas, right? It has, uh, just for now, so let's say it's 20, 125 by 100 to show you different numbers. So you know that this coordinate is 125, you know this is 0, 100, and so on. You can actually pick any old point X and Y in my canvas, okay? And then I can draw a horizontal line, and I can draw a vertical line. So now, there are four old points that show up, and I can know their coordinate. This one is going to be X, so this is X, 0, and this is going to be X, 100, because I already the, the full length, the height of this canvas is 100, and this point is going to be 0, y, and this guy is going to be 125, y. Okay, so now I have eight points. With this, I want to point out that as x changes, this length is width minus x, right? Since this is x, and the total is width, this is width minus x. And similarly, since that height is, that this guy is y, and this total is height, this much is going to be height minus y. Okay? So if you know all of this, now we can actually create four uh, rectangles. So one, two, three, four. We know all the points, we know all the width and height and everything, so we can color them all randomly. And then here is the idea for that. Okay? I want to increase my x and y so it keeps going in this direction. And then once it hits a a short point, I want it to come back. I'm going to try this in live coding, and then uh, you will see it. But I just want to explain the animation concept first so that you completely understand. Right? This is generative art in practice. So I'm increasing my x and y. So you can see that all the rectangles are adjusting their size, and then I'm adjusting them a little bit more. And then finally, they hit the boundary. And then they can actually start coming back to the same point. Right? So this is going back and forth is the whole animation. And now let's go over to the code and try this. Okay, I want to do some live coding so you can see it uh, take shape right in front of you. Let's try to create the four rectangles animation. I'll try to do some live coding here. So I have a blank canvas. And I like to first define a few colors. R. We are just do. We need four colors for four rectangles. So RGB. Let's do that. That's uh, green. Zero 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 zero. I have a blue. And then let's keep yellow or something. Okay, it, it six colors, six uh, letters there. And that's going to be very good. Now, let's start writing some code. Nothing special going on here. Okay, see, I'm going to create a point x, y in the canvas, and then I'm going to try to move it, right? So first, let's define our x and y, 100 comma 100 to start off with. And then I'm going to draw four rectangles. I'm going to draw a rectangle, first rectangle will go from 0, 0 to x, y. This is the easiest rectangle, but I also need to come up with a fill color. So why not use, let's say, colors of 0? But since we want four rectangles, 2, 3, 4, uh, let's make sure the colors are 1, 2, 3, 4. You can certainly put this in a loop and do more fancy things. But um, first rectangle, second rectangle will start from 
x0. Okay, so I actually have moved to the right x units, which means that the width, uh, the remaining width of the triangle rectangle is going to be width minus x because I've already come x. I only have to go width minus x. Uh, height is fine. Height is still y. For the third rectangle, I wanted to start from x is equal to zero. Y is already y value, and then. Uh, it can go x, that's fine. And then I guess this will be height minus y. And the final one is actually easy also because it will start from x, y and it has to go to the last point in the canvas which would be width minus x and height minus y. Uh, if uh, all this works, I will uh, try to explain this. So the very first time I run something, seems to take a little bit of time, uh, only when I'm also recording it. It doesn't take this long otherwise, but I've seen, I'm hoping that it will create a 400 by 400 pixel frame canvas there. Very nice. The colors are quite bright, I chose the primary colors, but at least for illustration, this is good. We're getting somewhere. Okay, so hopefully you've been following. We've not done any animation or anything so far. So let's close this and now, to, to start animation, right, we, we, need, we need to use the draw function. So in setup, I usually just like to keep my uh, size there. Let's delete that. And we'll draw over and over again. This draw function will get executed. Since I want to vary my x and y, unfortunately in, uh, unfortunately in processing, so we have to uh, define these variables as x and y as global because otherwise each time if I define it inside draw, it gets overwritten when it starts executing from the beginning. So it will come like And then my hope is that I can say that x y plus equal to 1. Okay. So let me explain what we're doing. We're drawing four triangles, four rectangles. I'm starting from 100 and 100, and then each time it runs, I'm going to increase the x by 1, so I'm hoping that the line will move. Let's uh, actually see if this even works, and then we can uh, see what we might have to make some more changes to it. But let's first take a look. The hope here is that it will start uh, drawing from 100 and 100, and that the four triangles will move, and the rectangles will move. There, that's very really nice. Ah. But you'll you already see one problem is that it's not stopping and it's going forever. So we want we would ideally like this uh, x value to bounce between two values. Okay. Um, so I could say that hey, if x is uh, exactly equal to 300, right? I want it to bounce. I want something to happen. I want it to change direction. That's really what I want to do. So I'm going to say this is a very standard trick, uh, direction into equal to minus 1. We have not actually defined a variable called direction, but I'm saying whatever that direction is going to be plus 1 or minus 1, and whatever it is, I'm going to change it. Okay. And I want to do the same thing when x uh, is 100 as the... Okay, so it looks like 100 first and then 300. So Whenever you start from, you want to change the direction. So now we need to define what direction is. So in the very beginning, let's say that direction has to be equal to minus 1. The reason I start from minus 1 is when I start, x will be 100, so it will come here, and then it will say that uh, direction will from minus 1 times minus 1 will become plus 1, which is the direction in which I want it to go. So it's just a trick to start from minus 1. Uh, and then it will keep going until it reaches 300, in which, at which point it will again uh, change the direction back. Very good. This should work, but I have to use direction here. Very good. Everything correct. Ah, one more thing. One more problem here. The direction also is global, right? The first direction minus one is coming from outside, and then as I change it, I need to sort of keep track of that. 
only for draw function. I don't like using globals. I know in Python and everywhere you're not supposed to use globals, but I just haven't found a way to avoid using it. So let's see if this if this works. If this really works, our four rectangles will come contact and expand, and they'll keep bouncing between x is equal to 100 and 300. So that should be good. Okay, hopefully when it hits 300, it starts going back. And again, when it hits 100, it starts coming out. Very good. Now, this is all I wanted to cover and I could stop it, but I always like to give one bonus. Uh, what if we wanted to go from here and if we wanted to go in this direction? Let's think about that. In this direction, x is actually increasing, but y is decreasing. Okay. So, first of all, I want to start from 100. 300, right? I want to start at x will keep increasing and x is increasing. That is happening. But y has to decrease. So we can get y minus equal to r. That is two. Very clear, right? Minus one times direction. So these two will always be in opposite direction. So as x is increasing, y will decrease. As y is increasing, x will decrease. I think that's this is really all I needed. For it to bounce from these two along the positive slope or for it to be the opposite diagonal, if you will. So if this works, we're going to see this start from 100, 300, keep going up until it reaches 300, 100, and bounce back. Okay? So there were a couple of things I probably tried to explain in the slide, but I think this is all I want to cover. So that exact code that we saw, I have uploaded it to this, uh, to my GitHub. So go to generative art. Uh, the whole directory is called workshop. There are a lot of useful files there. But please look at four animated rectangles.py, which is the exact file, and it should work. Okay, the idea is for you to download and use this code. You learn from it. Try to improve it. If you do improve it, make sure you add it in the comments. And we learn from each other. Okay? Good. One point which I was not really sure, so if, if, if you already understand it, we can skip this part. But the standard trick of changing directions, uh, we did this. So these are two boundary conditions, right? My, well, my uh, x is 100, then I want something different to happen, and x is 300. And I'm multiplying it direction by minus 1. Okay? Because for direction itself is a variable which takes only two possible values, it's either plus 1 or minus 1. If it is plus 1 and it hits 300, it's going to become minus 1. If it is minus 1, it's going to become plus 1. So we're just using the fact that minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, and minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So we use that 2 as a toggle. And then I'm saying that my x is the x plus direction. So I keep on increasing it once, and then when it hits the boundary, I'm decreasing it by 1. I'm doing the opposite for y. I'm starting from a number 300, and I keep decreasing it, and then I'm decreasing it. So play around with it. I hope that was useful. I really wanted it to be. And if you like it, don't stop here. Do watch uh, my. I have also made another video on generative art in practice. This involves how to create a grid, which is the basis for many, many of your art uh, creations, generative art. But I wanted to have rotations. I want to have random colors, random rotations of quarter circles. Okay. So and more and more in my channel, I want to create videos that will do this, so hopefully this is useful for you. Thanks for your time.